if you look at the energy consumption of buildings yeah, uh, all over the world, it's, it's actually the biggest part of consumers. Yeah? If you look at the industry itself and the buildings which have been built, yeah, and if you take that together, it's more than 30% of the energy consumption of that world. So if you don't take care of that as the architects, then there's probably no future. So it will become the norm to look after that, but not only in energy terms. I reckon it also comes down to a holistic approach to sustainability, which includes also a social quality, yeah, humanity. It's, it's about, if you look at mega cities, yeah, which will further grow in the future, you cannot only say, I'm going to build a building which just redu has a reduced amount of energy consumption. It's also about place making, giving something back to the city, yeah, doing something which is responsible in terms of public space. From that point of view it's more and more important and critical that people develop, that the architects develop concepts for mega cities, for big cities yeah, that are truly sustainable. It's, it's uh, looking after energy to um, 90% and I would think that this could change in the future over here. Uh, so move towards a more holistic approach. The trend must be to not just look into the mechanical aspects but to improve the architecture in passive means. And so less technique, more clever thinking. How do I locate my building? How do I orientate the building? What can I do in order to minimize heat gain yeah, in a passive way? Um, what, how compact can the building be? What qualities do we offer to the inhabitants, yeah, to the workers? Yeah. A lot of these measures are relatively expensive if you just look at the primary investments. This is complicating things a li little bit because some reasonable aspects are not integrated into design simply because people are afraid of the cost. Yeah? However, if they would look into the long-term um, development and, uh, and to the feasibility in long term, uh, in the long term, then you would find out that this pays back after 10 years, other things only after 20 years, but that's getting better as well. So I think that's going to change dramatically in the next decade, simply because there will be, uh, things will get cheaper, things will alter, will get more efficient, and by getting more efficient, it will get more attractive for clients to do so. Is there a change? Yes. People learn. People learn what's right, what's wrong uh, over long term, over the last 20 years. And so a lot of things which uh, were not that common and were not looked at, at being really, really important for green building design 20 years ago are pretty standard in our days now. Uh, there's another shift, um, which is that people get away from just putting mechanical stuff into the building in order to be more efficient. People are shifting towards a more passive approach. Yeah, that simply means back to the initial things you learned at school. Yeah? So where's the sun? How can I protect my building from the sun? How should it be located in order that I catch the wind, that I can allow for cross ventilation? And I think that's getting more and more important and that's what people learned now. Yeah?